This is the last part of toolkit, weights and biases, hugging face accelerate, and other useful tools. We have discussed pretty much the important toolkits that we will use. The last part concerns about keeping tab of our deep learning models, simplifying our coding and other useful tools such as Git and virtual machines. Weights and biases, or better known as 1B, offers tools that automate most of the common tasks in deep learning, that is from development to deployment. Why 1B? Deep learning model development is very iterative. 1B has tools to track our experiments. Mundane tasks such as plotting and logging should not be coded from scratch. In real world deployment, data set and model change over time. Data set and model are also defined by their performance and reproducibility. As such, we have to keep track of these changes. Lastly, we need a systematic way to visualize what is happening during our training and validation. We should also have an easy and secure way to share our results and have a productive discussion with our teammates. 1B has easy to use features to visualize and share results. Like other packages, installing 1B is easy. However, before using 1B, you must create an account at 1B.ai. Let us use 1B to track and visualize our experiments. First, log into 1B. We will train a ResNet 18 model from scratch. The train configuration is shown. Initial learning rate of 0.1. Train the model for 100 epochs. Batch size is 128. We will train on CIFAR 10 dataset. We initialize 1B with this config. We create the model using Torch Vision. By default, this model is a 1000 category classifier. So we replace the last layer with a linear layer to support 10 categories only. Using watch method, we can track the gradients during training. This is how we visualize the model creation. A ResNet 18 model has a fully connected head made for 1,000 classes. The head is removed and replaced by a fully connected layer made for 10 classes only. During training, we can observe that the gradients go to near zero. This is a strong indication that the model is learning. In this plot, the x-axis is the number of epochs or steps during training. Note that all 1B plots and tables can be visualized on Jupyter Notebook and on 1B website. In case you are not familiar with CIFAR 10 dataset, this figure illustrates samples from the dataset. There are 10 categories from airplane to truck. When training a model, it is best to visualize samples from the data set. In this case, we use 1B table to take samples from the test data set. We also show the ground truth and initial prediction. As expected, the initial prediction is wrong. After the model training, majority of the prediction will be correct. This figure illustrates the 1B table we can see that the initial prediction has been corrected after the model training. With 1B, we can log all important parameters during training, such as train accuracy, train loss, test accuracy, and test loss. It is important to note that the train loss and test accuracy are the two most important parameters here. The train loss should go down and the test accuracy should go up as the training progresses. We also log the value of learning rate. In this model, we decrease the learning rate over time. Every 1B should call finish to tell that we have completed the run. 
In this slide, we see how the train loss decreases over time, while the test accuracy increases until it saturates to about 75%. Once we're done with several experiments, we can share the results to our team for discussion. Please access this link to see the results. To improve our coding for training, it is best to minimize boilerplate code. 1B simplifies our life by providing tools for logging, visualization, and sharing. Hugging phase accelerate focuses on minimizing boilerplate code needed to support training on different hardware configurations. That is basically the motivation on why we should use Accelerate. We install Accelerate via PIP, then import Accelerator. These are the changes that we will do. Initialize an Accelerator. We don't need the device and manual migration of model and tensor to the chosen device. Before we can use Accelerate, wrap the model, optimizer, scheduler, and data loaders to Accelerate. We don't need manual calls to device. Lastly, instead of loss value backward, we call Accelerator backward. Accelerate supports 16-bit floating point if we want to speed up our training and inference. Here are some summaries of training for different hardware configurations. The plots are done through 1B. We can see that the best accuracy is about 75.5% for both CPU and GPU trainings. However, CPU training took about four and a half hours to complete. Meanwhile, GPU training is only 13 minutes. With GPU and 16-bit floating point enabled, this is further reduced to about 11.5 minutes. There is only a small decrease in accuracy to about 75.3%. The value of 16-bit floating point will be evident when training super large models and on big data sets. Lastly, other tools that are important, GitHub. Please create an account on GitHub. If you develop software, you certainly need a GitHub account and be familiar with Git command. Some important Git commands that you should be familiar with include clone, pull, add, commit, push, reset, and diff. Deep learning virtual machines will be useful when you perform experiments. Please use one of the following virtual machines, Google Colab, DeepNode, Kaggle, Gradient, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, or Amazon SageMaker. Other useful commands when you are maintaining a deep learning server include TMUPS, so your terminal and experiment persists even after you log out. NVIDIA SMI and other NVIDIA commands to know the status of your GPUs. Thank you for listening. We will have a short code demo. So this is the 1B demo. First thing you should do is to install 1B using pip install. After that, you have to create an account at 1B.ai. Then these are the imported modules. After that, you can already log in to 1B. And then this is the training configuration. And then this is the initialization of 1B. After that, you build the model using Torch Vision and then replace the last layer with fully connected supporting 10 classes. This is where we watch the model gradients during training. Then we define the loss function, optimizer, scheduler, and the train and test data loaders. 
and we visualize the test split. This for the meantime, this is the visualization test split. It has 10 categories from airplane to truck. And then uh, we use a 1B table to visualize images from the test split, including the ground truth, the initial prediction, and eventually the final prediction. This is a train loop. So we'll go to details of train loop eventually. And this is the test loop or validation loop. We'll go to details of the test loop eventually. This is the most important part of the demo, the 1B plus. Here, we log the model gradients, we log the train and test losses, we log the train and validation accuracies, and lastly, we also log the learning rate, which decreases over time. Every time we get the best performance score, we save the model to ResNet 18 best accuracy, that PTH. This is the training loop. And then once you run this training loop, you'll be able to visualize the output. So in particular, some samples from the test split, ground truth, this initial prediction, and then eventually it's corrected. Initial prediction, ground truth, and then the final prediction. And then this is the test accuracy, which is increasing over time. And if you're going to observe the train loss, the train loss is also decreasing over time. So that is a good indication that the model is learning. The train accuracy achieves almost 100%, but that is not important. The most important one is the test split accuracy. And these are the gradients. For example, this is the layer four down sample bias gradient. And this is the convolutional layer three weight. These are the gradients in the convolutional layer three. That's it. When you train this, it will take about 30 minutes in GPU. If you log into your 1B account, this is what you're going to see very interactive visualization of train loss, test accuracy, learning rate, everything. So this is can be done either individually or for all the test runs. You just need to enable, disable them. You can also see the uh, some sample data, for example, from the test split, this is the image, this is the ground truth, this is the initial prediction, and this is the final prediction. Some important logs on the system like GPU power, GPU utilization, including temperature as well. So this is the Accelerate demo. Before you use it, we've installed Accelerate. Everything the same here, except that you have to import accelerator. Everything the same here. We don't need to determine the device. And so we replace it by accelerator and we don't need to push the model to the device. So these are the laws, optimizer, schedule, everything the same. Then we wrap the model optimizer scheduler and train loader with accelerate API. Then we sample first some data from the test loader before we wrap it. This is the only line of code where we need to push that data to the device. Everything else this we don't need. This is the train loop. Here, we don't need to push the target and the data to the device. And instead of calling loss value backward, we call accelerator backward. Everything the same there, same case for the test. We don't need to push data and target to the device. And everything the same here. So this training is running 
So you can actually visualize the progress of the test accuracy and also the gradients. As the gradients go near zero over time. So these are the gradients. It's still big, but eventually that they will go to near zero value. Same case with test accuracy is going up at this point and the train loss is going down. That's it, thank you.